Hello everyone and welcome to the talk about debugging SQL programs on heterogeneous Intel architectures. My name is Natalia and I am developer in application debugger team at Intel, located in Munich, Germany. First of all, I want to acknowledge several past and present members of our team who contributed a lot to various parts of the debugger, which I am going to present today. So the plan for the talk is the following. First, I'm going to present you a one API programming model, and we are going to briefly discuss how a generic debugger works. Then we switch to the architecture of our debugger, and after that, I will do a small demo that shows the main features of our debugger. And then we discuss several challenges which our Arch theme faced during the debugger development. Modern problems imply diverse workloads, and in order to achieve the best performance, your application might need to run on a variety of hardware platforms. It's not only CPU and GPU, it could also be an FPGA or another type of a specific accelerator. And different platforms imply the usage of different tools, programming languages and libraries. And this makes it extremely difficult to reuse the code while switching from one platform to another. To address this problem, Intel recently launched a huge initiative called One API. It is an open source unified programming model which provides you with a full development stack for cross architecture programming. It is based on open standards and it includes the Dutch Parallel C++ language, which is based on the SQL standard by Kronos, and also a set of libraries and a low-level hardware interface. In November, we released a better version of Intel One API toolkits, which implement One API specification. Our debugger can be used to debug SQL programs, and it is included in the base toolkit. Let's look at how a debugger works. Debugger is a separate process which attempts to translate between the source level world of a user and machine level world of a program by using the debug information. For example, on Linux, GTB uses dwarf debug information. A debugger may attach to already running process or it can launch a new process by itself. A debugger relies heavily on the operation system support. First of all, it is the operation system responsibility to check that the debugger has enough permissions to control another process. Then the system allows the debugger to access debugging memory and the register state of its threads. Furthermore, the system provides means to alter the execution flow of the debugging process. The debugger then can interrupt and resume process and it can insert breakpoints and some specific locations. If the hardware allows, the debugger can stop the debugging process when a certain memory location is accessed. Additionally, all exceptions from the debugging process are delivered to the debugger first. Then the debugger can further inject them into the debugging process. How does this apply to the SQL applications? Let's look at how a SQL application is compiled. While the host part is compiled normally, the kernel requires multiple steps. The front-end compiler extracts them and translates them into intermediate PRV format. Uh, together with the debug information, it is then included to the host binary. When a SQL application is executed, it selects the device where its kernel are offloaded. The JIT compiler then compiles uh, kernels into the uh, native code for the selected device. Now the standard GTB can debug the host part. However, kernels uploaded to GTB are transparent to the debugger. Let's move on to the architecture which allows us to debug both host and kernel parts of the application in the same debug session. As I mentioned before, the host part can be debugged normally with the standard GTB via native or remote connection. For this, Linux provides the Ptrace interface to perform the debugging actions. Our debugger is able to detect whether the host process might wa want to offload kernels to the Intel GT. 
in case if it's detect that uh, it start the GDB server GT. GDB server GT is our GDB server which is aware of Intel GT platform. In GDB, we model each GPU device as a separate inferior with the remote connection to GDB server GT. In order to run two inferiors with the different target architectures, Linux native and uh, Intel GT, uh, we use the multi-target feature from GDB. With the Python API, we automated the launch of GDB server and uh, attaching to this. So this is happening transparently to a user. Now we have the running GDB server GT. To control the device, it's using the debug interface, which is available as a part of level zero interface. The level zero interface is included to the one API specification and its goal is to enable third party tool development. Via the debug interface, GDB server makes the driver aware that it is started and that the debugger is active. Then, SQL runtime via the level zero interface uh, checks whether the debugger is active. If it is, uh, some flows are changed inside the runtime. The SQL runtime uses Intel Compute Runtime as its backend. This computer runtime is also known as NEO. For just-in-time compilation, NEO uses the IGC compiler. Once the runtime is notified that the debugger is active, IGC disables most of its optimizations and additionally emits the debug information in the dwarf format. It also places a hard-coded breakpoint at the first instruction of each kernel. NEO in its turn allocates a context safe area for each device and during the debugging, this area is used for storing thread states. Uh, NEO also in, uh, generates the device code to install the system routine. The system routine is the hardware exception handler and it is invoked once the, uh, there is an exception, for example, a breakpoint hit. NEO also notifies the debugger about new kernels submitted to GPU. Now it is the time for the demo and we are going to debug a simple SQL application. The most compute intensive function in our application is the compute function. It takes two arguments, which are input array and array of outputs. Then inside, it initializes a SQL boilerplate, and in particular, it initializes the device queue, which just picks the default device. And in our case, that would be Intel GT device. And then it submits the task to the device queue. Inside the task, we define two accessors, the input accessor with the read permissions and the output accessor with the write permissions. And then we submit the kernel with a parallel form. Inside the kernel, we take an element with the input accessor, we modify the element, and then we store it to the output accessor. There is also a conditional branch inside the kernel, so all even elements are incremented by 1000 and all odd elements are set to minus 1. When the kernel is submitted to Intel GT device, this branch causes the, thre the thread diversions. And this is something that might be interesting to see from the debugger. The main function is straightforward. We, initialize, we define two arrays, input, inputs and outputs, and we initialize the input array. Then we call the compute function. So this is the source code for our SQL sample application. We compile it with the following command, and we invoke that file C++ compiler with minus G and minus O0 flags, as well as fsql flag, which is required to compile SQL applications. Now we can 
start this application under the HTTP control. Let's do this. But first, let's check the output of info inferiors command. In HTTP inferior represents the debugging process. So it's basically the thing that is being debugged by HTTP. Right now, GCP has just one inferior, and it corresponds to the binary that we just compiled. The null description here uh, is because we haven't started uh, the inferior yet. Uh, let's first uh, define a couple of breakpoints inside the kernel. So this is for the then branch, and for the else branch, and we also want to define a breakpoint outside of the kernel at the end of the main function. Now we are ready to run our application. We do it with the run command. We go to stop, and GDB tells us that thread 2.2 hit breakpoint 2, uh, defined at the line 19 at the else branch. That means that we actually are inside the kernel. Let's do info inferiors once again. Now we have two inferiors, and asterisk here shows that the currently selected one is the number two. It is the remote target, and it has the remote connection to GDB server GT. As I mentioned before, GDB server GT is the GDB server which we targeted to support Intel GT platform. We use this inferior to model the GPU part of the SQL application, and we use the first inferior to model the host part. Uh, for GTB, those two inferiors are, are separate processes. They do not, they are not connected, uh, and uh, they have different target act architecture underneath. So let's check the disassembly command. As currently selected inferior is the second one, it's a GPU. Uh, here we see Intel GT instruction set. Uh, most of the instructions in Intel GT are CMD instructions, so single instruction, multiple data, and they work, they process several data elements. Uh, when the debugger is present, um, the most typical number of elements is eight. Uh, now let's enable the TUI graphical output, oh. the TUI interface, and let's list all threads that are known to GCB. We can do it with the info threads command. Uh, each thread has an ID which is shown uh, in the first column of this table. So the ID consists of two numbers. The first represents the inferior number to which the thread belongs, and the second one is the number of threads within the inferior. We see that for the host inferior, we have just uh, two threads, and for the GPU inferior, which is the second one, we have nine threads. With the info threads command, you can print not all the not all threads, but we also can print just a couple of them. So let's print uh, the second and the third threads from the GPU inferior. Asterisk here means that this thread is active. And we also have some numbers up to the column sign here. Uh, these numbers show you which CMD lanes are currently active within this thread. Um, so both of, both of these threads are stopped at the lane, line 19, which is the else branch. And by looking at the condition, that means that uh, here all elements are odd indexed. And that parallels to what we see here uh, with the active CMD lanes. Only, if, only odd CMD lanes are active. Let's now continue. And uh, now the same breakpoint is, is hit by a different thread. We can do continue again. So. 
and now the uh, first breakpoint is hit by the second thread. Now we expect that only uh, events in the lanes would be active. Let's check that. And yes, so the currently selected single lane is zero, uh, is zero and uh, other active lanes are two, four, and six. Local variables in the kernel offloaded to the Intel GT device are actually implicit vectors. So if we examine a chunk of memory where the variable is located, we would see eight elements. Let's check that. We can use uh, examine memory command from GTP, which is X, and we want to print eight elements in the decimal format uh, at a size of a board, board. And we want to use the address of the element. We see that there are actually eight elements. The even index elements are non minus one, and the Odd index variable where elements are minus one. And that corresponds to what we saw. So the else branch was already processed. So odd elements are in fact expected to be minus one. However, we can do the same investigation with the more convenient interface. We can just switch uh, between CMD, uh, we can switch uh, thread to another CMD lane. So let's switch the, se uh, the second thread to the second lane. And we can just print an element. Uh, this corresponds to what we saw with the examine memory command. Uh, let's switch to the let's switch to the uh, fourth CMD lane. And print element again. Um, in fact, we can all actually um, omit the thread ID and just use the uh, CMD lane number. Uh, we can also do info locals, and that would show us all locals memory variables um, inside this kernel. So we have just one, it is element, and then we have nine hidden uh, local variables, which are added by the IGC compiler. We can also do info args, and this shows us arguments of the kernel. Now let's remove all kernel uh, breakpoints and continue. Uh, the thread 1.1 1 .1 which belongs to the host part, hit the th third breakpoint. And that means that we are now back to the host. We can do info locals from here. And we see that um, we see our host local variables, which are our input array and our output array, which was modified by the kernel. Uh, we can do disassembly. And here we see the normal x86 instructions. Now, if we continue, uh, the program finishes and we can switch GZB. Let's move on and discuss some challenges that we faced during the development of the debugger. First, to come from the C language. These are implicit pass by reference function arguments which DGDB could not determine correctly and inferior calls for C templated functions. We resolve these problems. The other three come from the GPU world. We want to have a CMD model integrated to GDP interface. Uh, we also want to efficiently model thousands of device threads. We have some scalability concerns about the current implementation of the conditional breakpoints in, in GDB. While we resolved the thread view with the CMD lanes inside GDB, the later two issues are still under investigation. 
Let's walk through them one by one. C++ ABI defines that pass-by-value argument can be implicit pass-by-reference if the argument type is not trivially copyable. GDB had bugs in function evaluation and could not correctly determine implicit pass-by-reference argument. It became especially noticeable in SQL programs where GDB did not correctly determine that the ID class is truly pass-by-value. That was breaking the print command with the square operator from the accessor class. We improved the function call mechanism in GDB and presented our solution to the GDB community. Our patches were then accepted to the upstream and now part of the standard GDB. We further requested an addendum to the OpenCL debug information specification. So the needed debug information propagates all the way down from the front-end host compiler to the JIT compiled kernel. The next challenge is related to inferior calls of templated functions. SQL specification and its Intel implementation heavily rely on templated C++ classes and functions. That means that for many functions, if a symbol is not explicitly used in the source code, the compiler does not emit this symbol. The debugger, furthermore, does not have any means to know how templates are inst instantiated. This leads to the following problem. If operator plus for the ID class is not used in the source code, the debugger cannot evaluate ID plus 5 expression. This issue could have been addressed if with the explicit template instantiation. Uh, for example, we could include an additional header file in the user program. However, when several instances of a function are available, the debugger cannot infer which instance of the templated function should be referred. We mitigated this with the X method function or oh, Python API. Uh, it is similar on how GDB handles C++ containers from the standard template library. We defined several critical SQL operators uh, in Python. This also allowed us to improve the user experience while the debugging on GPU. There, we don't have any inferior calls as all functions are inlined. So how does the X method feature work? GDB provides a Python interface to define additional methods or to replace existing methods for a C++ class. This can be very useful when methods are unavailable to GDB, for example, due to inlining or due to compiler optimizations. One can use this feature via xMethod matcher object and xMethod worker object. This ma the matcher is responsible for checking the class name and the method name. Then on the match, it returns the set of xMethod workers. For example, our matcher checks that uh, we look at the SQL accessor class and the operator square, bra square brackets. Each worker usually corresponds to an instance of an overloaded method and has a list of its argument types. Based on this list, GDB then performs the overload resolution and it picks the best matched X worker, X method worker. Uh, separately, GDB also looks for the best match uh, among the available C++ method, methods. Then it compares the best X method worker with the best C++ method and chooses the winner. In case when they are equally good, GDB chooses the X method, as its invocation does not require resuming the inferior, which might perturb the debuggy state. Let's move on to the GPU challenges now. When debugging a SQL program on GPU, we face the following issue. SQL kernels are typically written with a focus to a single data element. However, uh, an Intel GPU thread typically processes several work items at once, as the most of Intel GPT instructions are CMD. 
We wanted to extend the GDB model with the CMD concept, so the user has convenient means to debug a, a single work item with the standard GDB means. To solve this issue, we extended GDB to support CMD debugging. We added notion of current plane field to the GDB thread representation. And we integrated CMD syntax into the thread related commands. And we enhanced the breakpoint implementation. In particular, the condition of a breakpoint is checked for all enabled CMD lanes. Each Intel GT instruction has a 32-bit execution mask, which defines enabled CMD lanes. So what can influence the execution mask? First of all, it is the execution size of the instruction. The size is smaller than or equal to 32 and is a power of 2. The size does not exceed the CMD width of the kernel, which defines the maximal possible execution size of the instruction. Secondly, some lanes might be disabled due to the size of the underlying scientific problem. If the number of a data elements is not a multiple of the instruction execution size, some threads might have constantly disabled CMD lanes at the end. And finally, CMD lanes might be also disabled due to the conditional flow inside the kernel that we have seen during our demo. These restrictions led us to the set of requirements for our CMD model in GDB. We display only enabled CMD lanes. We actually do not have any means to distinguish between disabled and non-existent CMD lanes. CMD width of a thread is not fixed, as the thread might switch between different kernels which are dispatched with a different CMD width. A user can switch only between enabled CMD lanes, and we guarantee that after the stop, GDB chooses an enabled CMD lane within the stop thread. We preserve the standard GDB behavior in case the target architecture does not support CMD or a thread does not have CMD lanes. To implement this, we rely on IGC emitting that uh, emitting the debug information which describes CMD. The next challenge is still under investigation and it is scalability concerns for modeling device threads. On CPU, threads are created by a process and they remain with this process until they are destroyed. It is different for GPU. The hardware dispatches available threads to active kernels and then a thread can switch between different kernels or it became, be, can become idle. As there is a chance that this happens quite frequently, we require an efficient way to model thousands of device threads and support this behavior. In the past, uh, we used the initial breakpoints to emulate thread creation events. At some point, we also used kernel exit events to synthesize thread destruction events. Although that helped us to model threads similar to CPU, that caused a very high intrusion and was not very usable. As the current state, the debugger knows only about threads that reported an event, a breakpoint hit in the most cases. However, to place a user-defined breakpoint, we still need to stop each kernel at the initial breakpoint. To minimize the intrusion, we are now evaluating a different model. We want to introduce a new thread state unavailable. Similar to a running state, we cannot interact with such a thread. However, we also cannot stop it. This state means that a thread is not dispatched to the kernel which are debugging. So that means that the thread is not working on this kernel. Uh, the state flow looks like this. A stop thread can be resumed and then it changes its state to running. 
However, until we try to stop the thread, we do not really know whether it's still running uh, the kernel or it become, became unavailable. Once we try to stop it, then we know. So this, the state of the thread uh, is updated to either, either stop or unavailable. This would require further changes in the debugger. We need to place breakpoints once the kernel is submitted. And there is no need to thread entry or exit events. The last challenge is also under investigation, and it is concerns about conditional breakpoints in GDB. GDB provides an interface to place a breakpoint with a certain condition then GDB would report the stop event to the user only if this condition is met. Currently, the debug interface reports all stop events to the GDB server, and GDB server reports them to GDB. And only inside GDB we are evaluating the condition. Then, if the condition is true, the GDB reports the stop to a user. However, if the condition is unmet, uh, GDB resumes the thread and sends it to GDB server. And GDB server then sends the resume request to the debug interface. With a thousand of threads, we expect that this handshaking between GDB, GDB server, and the debug interface will become problematic. The idea is to move the condition evaluation as close to, to the device as possible. We are evaluating several options. The first one is to evaluate the condition inside the GDB server. Then GDB server would report to GDB only stops for which the condition is true. This would require translating the condition into some simple format which GDB server can evaluate. The second option is to generate a device code for the condition evaluation and then inject it to the kernel code. Thus, the debug interface will report only threads for which the condition is true. The third approach is less flexible than the second one, but might be easier to implement. For a specific class of conditions, for example, for a breakpoint on a specific work item, we could add a parameterized condition evaluation to the system routine. If the condition is unmet, then the system routine resumes the thread, and only threads uh, for which the condition is true are reported to the GDB server. This is the end of the talk. A short summary of our debugger. It can debug offloaded kernels for GPU, CPU, and FPGA emulation. It works both on Linux and Windows. Uh, the GDB part was extended with the thread CMD model, and we also fixed uh, the function call mechanism in GDB. To simulate uh, some known SQL template functions, we use X methods. Our main concern is the scalability. It is expected to be a major challenge. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please drop us an email and we would be happy to answer you. Thank you.